Hey, what's up, Malaka? Nothing is better than watching Elden Ring with the ginger ale and a bag of chip flavored chicken sandwich. And hey, shout out to the YouTuber, Vadi Vidya, who created this content. I love it, and I cannot wait to watch some more. Can you? Oh my god, I can't wait. What if I told you that fighting two watchdogs can actually be easier than fighting ah. one? With just a few crystal darts, you can stun and short circuit the Erd Tree burial watchdogs, causing them to attack anything around them. This sort of crystal darts, baby. Lasts Very exclusive. Seconds, which is more than enough time for them to kill anything else. Ah, chicken so sandwich. Up on mm -mm -mm -mm. Imps, but they have to have enough health. To withstand a few dots. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I'm in love with Chick fil A. About Elden Ring, and this tip makes so many of them way easier. So, why do crystal darts have this effect then? Well, to me, it seems like crystals were once a part of the watchdog's creation. A glintstone is embedded in the watchdog's staff. For example, Glintstone, baby. The crystal One of its own kind. Long ago, it is said that a golem crafter mm -hmm. employed a similar crystal. That's good, that's good ginger. We'll go deeper into this. Good sandwich. I recommended making crystal darts for your playthrough when the sorcerer game assassin. They're quite mm. powerful and they're easy to make, but it always bothered me then how so many humanoid enemies have this habit of dodging them. Elden Ring's enemies do quite a lot of input reading. I'm sure you're familiar with this, uh, but the same goes for most sorceries as well. But did you know? Hey, an shocker, huh? Of sorcery that specifically does not trigger. So technically, you can move around a lot and use sorcery, but your source is not really OP. As you know, these are the big magic NPC invaders or just bosses like Millennia, who literally won't see this coming. But they'll dodge everything. Don't even get me started on her. These night sorceries. I die like a hundred times. And their glintstone counterparts, but you know, actually being able to hit your enemy makes these spells pretty damn worth it sometimes. Mm. Night sorceries are designed to be assassination spells, which gives them a really nice piece of gameplay flavor since enemies can't dodge them. I'm glad they have that. But speaking of yeah. assassination, people commonly underestimate the crouch the poke. Crouches. Very so, pokey. Of course, it lets you sneak up on enemies. And if you hit an unaware enemy, then you'll do like 25% extra damage on your first hit. But beyond that, crouch attacks specifically can be really powerful, even if you use them mid combat. This is because crouch are one of the That's right. The backstab. Animation. Yeah, in Dark Soul, if I fight in an NPC so that's like a humanized soldier, attack, I always circle around to the back and just poke him right behind. Especially the Havel soldier from Dark Souls. And this attack is especially Trust me, great you're going to need Pokemon. Classes. It can compensate for the weaknesses that they have in their traditional movesets. Halberds, for example, are typically lacking a fast horizontal swing. Mm -hmm. Your Crouch R1 gives you quick access to one. As another example, Colossal Swords, like the Guts Great Sword. Yeah, and if you watch my last video, he mentioned that you can paint and jump backwards. And then you can go back forward again and poke. Alternatively, if you're dual wielding, you can even try crouched L1 attacks. So just consider weaving these into your playstyle if you aren't already. It can completely change the viability of certain weapons. Another thing, a lot of I like those dual swords. Are ah! Paints, which just like I mentioned, paint it. You can only perform with rapiers and curved swords. If you tap the dodge button while mm. you're holding a heavy attack, you'll cancel the heavy attack while stepping backwards and attacking at the same time, which allows you to maneuver for distance and deal damage at the same time. This backstep attack has been around since Dark Souls, and it didn't get much play in Dark Souls either, really. Um, but in Elden Ring, I think there's one exception that makes this attack really good, and that's the Frozen Needle Rapier. This rapier- Airbender, baby. Its R2 and its charged R2 attack is unique in that it shoots you don't miss with the ice tribe. at your opponent, dealing damage and frostbite without even costing you FP. When this is really great, however, is when you use this R2 while no FP? The icicle attack doesn't have a huge range, so you can I mean, yeah, at a sort of you don't want to be too OP, otherwise, <laughs> this game will be hard for you. Sorry. Which is a really awesome playstyle, and I wish Elden Ring had more techniques like this. These are the sort of little combat intricacies that I love making builds out of, and I have another really good tip that's spellcasters. Please don't patch this! So, 
you would have make it fun have a for a while last time right sorceries like carry and slicer have a wind up before you attack as do incantations like stone of grunk mm. however one really cool thing is you can make a lot of these spells come out a lot faster if you combo them with other spells and attacks for example, you can remove the wind-up on Carry and Slicer if you cast it right after a regular melee attack, or cast it right after casting a different spell. <coughs> Here's a comparison. As yeah, and I, I could have sworn there's some helmets or maybe an armor where it allows you to cast a spell which actually goes a really sooner than usual, probably 0.5 second split difference. There are a ton of other spells that work this way, and while the inputs can be a little bit tricky with the D-pad, it's a really fun high skill cap thing that you can do to deepen the game quality of your spellcaster. There are a lot I usually don't use a lot of magic, I'm more like um, I'm gonna write a samurai class or a big sword, below, depends so who you fight. With your own, if you know of any that I've missed. Now, doing this makes mm, spell casting mm, mm. more of a high skill. Chip Flight's good this time of the year, guys. If you want to mm, make mm. spell casting less complicated, it just buys Nimic. I have just the thing for you. Defeat Radan and progress below Limgrave here to find the Mimic Tear Ashes in Nokron. Everyone knows this summon is powerful at this point. How could it not be? It's just a copy of everything on your character at the point it is summoned, even your talismans. He'll be your best friend throughout the whole game. There's a talisman in the game called Shabriri's Woe, which you can find here in the Frenzied Village. When it's Who knew that could be a useful talisman? ...forces enemies to focus their attacks on you to the point that they'll actually ignore your summons completely. Oh! Especially I mean, if you know how to dodge, then good for you. But if you don't, then you have a big great shield, you might want them to focus on your summon instead, because you could definitely do more damage. Equipped, it will now take all of the enemy aggro, leaving you free to cast ranged attacks with complete impunity. This is a really good way to help increase the viability of bow builds, for example. Uh, but it's also a great way to make sorcery completely broken, since sorcery is very powerful. <laughs> you could even go a step further. Especially with the most powerful sorcery, where you shoot a single star beam. <laughs> if you really want them to tank for you, it's it's a beautiful sight. You, you just completely just obliterate you your boss. Alteration in a second. There are three surprising facts about armor alteration that I think a lot of people might have missed. First, I do have a lot of armor, but I really need to get Raging Wolf. In all cases that I kind of screw up the quest, though. Versions of armor offer less resistances, but are a lower weight Ooh. as well. So Carbon dioxide, baby. Of having the right equip load, consider altering a few pieces of armor. Fashion is important, yes, but not if it means fat rolling. Next, in some cases, <laughs> altering your armor. Fashion soul. Special properties. I actually fat roll for years and then <laughs> my friend's like, dude, what the heck are you thinking? That's not how you roll. I'm like, oh, I thought you want to be heavy and tanky, you know. That I mentioned before. As another example, altering the black knife chest piece removes black knife, which naturally also removes its stealth enhancing capabilities. Oh, really? Any other examples like this? Let me know in the comments. And finally, and most importantly for me, a lot of altered armor sets have different lore descriptions. The altered yes, they land do. of Reed's armor, for example, tells you more about the actual land of Reed's, which is locked in a miserable civil war, during which time it has remained alienated from the cultures. I know we go to the land in between, but there's so many lands out there. I'm pretty sure the Elder Ring franchise can actually expand the other lore of lands out there, which I would die to see for. Like Sekiro, uh, you know, Samurai, Elden Ring version. Hey, I'll go for it. This armor with them removed would describe a different point in this knight's life. There are a ton of altered armor sets that work this way, and I just think this is such an amazing little detail for the devs to have included. But one thing that I kind of wish that they didn't include... Uh, Revenge! <laughs> they suck. Uh, that said, the difficulty that you have getting past these chariots kind of makes destroying them... Feel it takes a lot of time and patience and discipline. You get it does. Uh, it can be very brutal, but there are some great rewards you can find. Duel ...in the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave, back where you started the game. So let's destroy it. 
To do this, carefully make your way past the chariot, mm -hmm. jumping down at pretty much every ledge that you see until you end up at a poison swamp. Then take the elevator back up. Wait a minute. Here, you'll have I don't a think I've been here before. These giant pots that hang above the roof, hidden in the shadows. And when they drop, they explode in blue flame. So line up a shot, wait for the chariot to bump into the wall below you. And that is your trigger to fire. You get three attempts at this. There are three pots. And when you do drop it, it explodes the chariot, giving you the Erd Tree Great Bow. In Bro! Okay, damage. now, that is my favorite secret so far. I don't have to say any more, but that's my favorite secret. Wow. Here, there's a section with two chariots, and we need to destroy these two. So, to do that, we need to introduce a third Bro, that just blew my mind. You, dude, you just made my day, because I've always wanted to get these son of a... Use this corpse on the edge as a guide to drop down further to some rafters. Continue further down. This game is full of surprises. How do people manage to find all this? At this point, you can go further up or down the ramp. Both will lead you to this same pillar of imp statues that breathe fire. Make sure you hit it once, just once, to send it upwards. This pillar also includes the Rosa statue that summons the chariots and this will send a chariot spawn further up to crash so head back up die if you need to and watch them crash you that's right guys make sure you die armor set and the holy ground ash of war tree heroes. sentinel in Gelmir hero's grave you can't destroy the riderless chariot dude i, I love this <laughs> i'm actually admiring it down into the gap make sure you jump into this corner here you'll land on the road and from these rafters you can jump down onto the riderless <laughs> chariot but before you do that go inside the window to loot the gelmir set and kill the blood <laughs> i did find them accidentally which is great i was pretty shocked the rafters and drop that was actually one of my favorite hidden chariot. location this and you got so many fun things down into the lava and you'll finish the dungeon as a reward alternatively though you can <laughs> back step down <laughs> through this lava or quick step through but that's kind of a lot less fun. For now, yeah. Did you know that weather can affect your damage? If it's raining, it does? It do around 10% less fire damage, but your lightning damage will be increased by 10%. Just like Pokemon! Woo! Electric is effective against water, water, but water is an effective against fire. You're not a real Pokemon, are you? That this effect is applied to everything. Sorry, I need some ginger ale. Just every enemy that's wet, per se. This rain effect is something you should really keep in mind if you're doing jewels at the main academy. The last episode, they can clean your bloodstain with the soap. And not only that, it seems to rain really often the rain affects you, apparently. Lightning builds will inherently be at an advantage here, I guess, while fire builds Ooh. will be at a disadvantage. Lastly, let's talk about buff stacking. That's yes, to get we need to have a talk. Sort of regardless of your build as well. So, disregarding talisman and armor buffs, which are permanent, there are different categories of temporary Bro. buffs in the <laughs> ring, and you can only Mr. have OP. one temporary buff active from each category. There are weapon buffs, shield buffs, body buffs, aura buffs, health regen buffs, and stamina regen buffs. And in addition to these, there are some special buffs that don't follow any of these rules. So keep those in mind. That's Holy Ground and Terra Magica, for example. Now, activating as many temporary buffs as you can is a huge way to unlock the potential of your character. So here are the buffs that I've found that basically work on every character. To start, you can activate health and stamina regen buffs just with your flask okay. of Wondrous Physic. You just need the Crimson Burst tier and the Green Burst I tier. do have those two, These sir. These tiers are located here and here. Next, an easy way to get access to an aura buff. I do have the also. Ash of War, which is located here. This gives you 15% extra damage and 15% damage negation as well. And you can just put this on a light dagger. You can activate it and then switch back to your main weapon. That's incredible. As for body buffs, the Black Guard sells infinite boiled crab here and then here, which gives you 20% extra physical resistance. And as for <laughs> weapon and shield buffs, these kind of do depend you know, what my concern is, when you're doing one buff at a time, you have to be very quick because the very first buff that you just activated, there's a timer on it. And once you get to your last buff that you want to activate, 
You gotta be very quick because your first puff is gonna wear off really quick. But hey, I like your idea, man. I'm totally on board. Getting a new PC and repairing the old one. So I really want to thank him for helping me to edit during this time and editing at some other times as well. He's an amazing editor and he's fantastic at getting cinematic footage way better than what I can get. So I want to thank him for that. And he is an incredible channel as well. He's been doing these really amazing cinematic Half-Life short animations, which are fantastic. Please go and check them out. And also before I go, I want to let you know that I'm doing a sale. Where's Half-Life 3? Come on, man! Only. They're all 20% off. All right, well, sorry, dude. Uh, yep, like, buy his posters. All right. Um, Yep. Okay, time. so 10 crazy useful gameplays, secrets in Elden Ring. I love it. I mean, like I said, the guy who makes this video, he's a genius. Love him, love him, love him, love him. All right, well, just let me know your thoughts in the comment section below or check out his video, support his channels. Um, he deserves it. Big time. And good bag of Chick fil A and ginger ale. Sorry if I was gross, but I was hungry, guys. I haven't eaten for 24 hours. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you in Malacca's later. This is Get Me Greek. Out. <laughs>